Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Ultimate General American Revolution, a game that is in early access on Steam by the folks of Game Labs, the folks behind Ultimate General American Civil War, Ultimate General Gettysburg, um, and then kind of sort of Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail and Dreadnoughts. Um, I think the teams are different depending on the game you're talking about, but... Regardless, uh, we're going to be returning to this series where we are in the midst of playing through the American campaign. There will be a British campaign eventually. That's the next major update for the game. But for the moment, anyway, we are playing through the American campaign, uh, which I believe covers the full war now. Uh, we have successfully taken Boston, and I believe we destroyed most of the British army that was there. I think a few stragglers escaped north toward Fort George or maybe Fort Stevens. I don't see Gage on the map anywhere, so maybe he was, like, dis defeated? Uh, maybe he's somewhere. I I'm not sure. Regardless, uh, we have successfully taken Boston. We've also successfully taken Fort Saratoga and Fort Ticonderoga. And so we are threatening, in theory, uh, the British position in Canada. And our next objective, our next major objective... Are we over the stack limit? I'm confused what happened that we... How did we end up six regiments over? Anyway, um, our next major objectives are to take Quebec and Montreal. That's based on the historical American invasion of Canada in 1776, uh, which did take Montreal, but did not take Quebec. And um, yeah, so that's sort of our next obje objective. We got a year to do it, so we don't have to do it right now. It is the fall of 1775. It may not be wise to push into Canada, you know, late in the season. Uh, maybe it would make sense to let the winter play out. But I don't know. Um, you know, campaigning in the winter pro is difficult in this game because the game does sort of kill, and I mean kill, provisions availability pretty much throughout the entire map during the winter. We do have a wagon, which will help. We have some provisions stockpiled and some ammo as well. But, uh, but yeah, that type of campaign will be difficult. That being said, before we even get to invading Canada, uh, we do need to clear up our supply lines. So the British did take Fort Rice from us uh, not that long ago. And as a result of them taking Fort Rice from us, they have effectively split the Americas in two. They have split... Uh, Massachusetts and New Hampshire and these areas here, which we have linked all via supply line with the exception of Castine, uh, but all of these areas are linked via this green road supply line indicating supplies are flowing. But when they took Fort Rice, they basically cut off the ability of the eastern portion of these northern colonies to trade effectively, well, I guess probably at all because there's no port on the map right now for New York, to trade at all with the New York you know, bases. So Ticonderoga, Saratoga, Albany, Bennington, and Kingston, and Fort Montgomery, they are all linked. Uh, they are c c persisting because Ticonderoga and Saratoga had large numbers of supplies that we captured from the British when we took those bases. But transferring recruits from east to west has basically been impossible. And as a result, we took heavy casualties in this campaign to rid the British from Montgomery, Saratoga, and Ticonderoga. And you can see most of these units here are heavily uh, outnumbered. They are not outnumbered, but heavily understrengthed. And part of that is because these towns by themselves don't. They're smaller towns. You know, 3,000 in Kingston. This fort here is 4,000. Albany has 1,900. Saratoga 1500 and Ticonderoga 500 like there are not a lot of workers there that means there are not a lot of recruits there meanwhile Boston on the other hand 15,000 workers in Boston right now uh, so you know considerably more resources there to generate recruits Hartford for example has 200 recruits there right now Hatfield has almost 600 recruits in addition to the workers there so again the forces to the west having trouble resupplying because there's no link there. So the next thing that we have to do is we need to go ahead and take Fort Rice back from the British so we can clear that line and relink east and west uh, effectively. And then what we will likely do is once we take Fort Rice, I'm planning on driving north to Hubberton to take that because that's kind of an intersection as well if we are going to eventually invade 
Canada taking Harberton would be wise. It'll secure the flank of our troops as they move up toward Frederick, Burlington, and St. John. It will also give us the supply line to shift east and take Lovell and Stevenson to really clear the British out of New Hampshire. So really this fall campaign is less directly about Canada. It's more about setting the groundwork for the invasion of Canada, but clearing out New Hampshire uh, from British influence. And I guess, is this technically, is it Hubbardton, New York? But in any event, clearing these four bases out of British uh, influence. So that's our next objective. Now, one other thing we are struggling with is not producing enough muskets. Part of that is we are not mining enough material to produce those muskets. Uh, we have less resources than we do, uh, you know, um, the ability to use them. Uh, and uh, so one thing hopefully I'm looking at doing is maybe refilling our iron stocks to get a little bit of free iron, uh, but also maybe looking at uh, at building some more re uh, infrastructure. So we are in the process of building some mining infrastructure in New York. Um, and then I'm also thinking it probably makes some sense to expand some mining infrastructure where we can elsewhere. It might also just make some sense to expand the logistical infrastructure in Connecticut and Rhode Island uh, because those areas have kind of overbuilt. Like we can't we can't do more agriculture mining or whatever here in these two places here, the red areas, because we don't have any slots, which I think if we increase our logistics, that'll open up more slots, I think. Uh, but that's a discussion for another time. First things first, the attack on Fort Rice, which we will do. Uh, but the first thing actually we're going to do is I want more cannons. If we're going to be attacking enemy forts, I'm tired of assaulting and losing tons of soldiers in the process. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to build a new artillery battery. We've got three four-pound galloper guns in the arsenal. We'll need to buy one more to fill this battery out. But we'll put a four-pound uh, battery in the New Haven Militia Group. So we'll do that. And then we will also do a... Probably going to leave this militia unit behind because there's only 141 of them. But I guess this this militia unit here, the Whit Whitfields, I just just Whitfields uh, militia battalion, will go ahead and uh, purchase a artillery battalion as well with gallopers. So I will go ahead and move up to the market and purchase. We needed to purchase one more four pound galloper, which is 600, and then we'll need to purchase two more. three pound gallopers now that does leave us dangerously low on cash so we're going to go ahead and sell the textiles we have in cash generate 500 gold that way it gets us back over a thousand for the moment i probably will also need to spend more on like recruiting and things like that right now we haven't increased our bounties for new soldiers or for uh, existing soldiers to remain in the ranks but we will probably need to start doing that soon as well so, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and unpause this. Actually, first things first, let's go ahead and get these units with the new artillery prioritized first for reinforcements. So we'll go ahead and shift these guys over so they're priority one and two. Oh, it says 164 days. That doesn't track. And we'll move forward to September 24th and see if they're able to fully equip or not. I don't know. I mean, they don't have a lot of civilian muskets, which I believe the artillery require. Uh, confiscation of cargo. A British merchant ship has entered one of our ports by mistake. We can confiscate the cargo, but the merchants to who the cargo was intended will not be happy with such a decision. It's in Rhode Island. It is a 94% loyalty in Rhode Island. I will take the cargo. I need the gold. We also just finished our intelligence department. So now we have diplomacy. We unlocked that. All right, so the first group, did they, they fully equipped this battery of artillery, so good news for them. And so did Whitfields. Okay, so we're ready to go. We, I mean, not all these units are full at full strength, but they're full enough, I think. Um, let's go ahead, not all factories, whatever. Yeah, we don't have enough iron or wood, frankly, to produce 74 muskets a day. All right, so our Commander-in-Chief, Horatio Butcher, is now able to assign a new thing. We also can assign a Chief of Intelligence. Neither of these guys are particularly good, but it looks like Noah May is the best of the options. Chief of Intelligence, Research Speed. 
So the first thing to start unlocking the uh, intelligence tech tree. And then Horatio Butcher. <clears throat> I really want Fusiliers. To get to Fusiliers, I need to get down this section. So if we go over here to Army Innovation 2, that'll open up a new general limit so we can have two field armies, which I think will be very good. It'll also give us more specialists per week, five. So that's like two schoolhouses worth of specialists. So that that is useful. Those are effectively are the low-ranking officers. So I think that's our next thing over there. And I mean, I do need more iron. Maybe we do we pause the qualified engineers thing here that Artemis Ward is working on to refill the iron. Because that'll help produce more muskets. And then with the intelligence department open, foreign relations is now open. I don't really know what I can do here. It just kind of exists, I guess. Tensions confidential. What the hell does that mean? Tensions tragic. What does confidential tensions mean? How do I ally to them? Like, what, what am I supposed to do here? So the window is open. Convene an international relations committee. What the hell will that do? Is this going to cost money? Are you sure you want to convene an international com committee to change relations with France? I mean, I'd like for them to become our allies. But let's hold off for that, because I don't, I don't really know what that does. But let's hold off on that for a moment. Um, all right, so we're ready to move the troops out of Hatfield, I think. Real quick before we do that, let's take a look at the musket situation. We are up to... How are the U.S. muskets not on here? Because we produce them, so I can't sell them. Well, there's no muskets in the stockpile, I guess, so that's the thing. Um, all right, I don't have a ton of cash to spend, but let's just have a few Charleville available for casualties. To Same for the Spanish. Because we'll probably have some desertions. I guess we'll buy the two brown vests that we can. The short brown vest, I think, can be used for artillery. Oh, no, it's only used by Dragoons. Never mind. And we do have the Hunter Rifle, but I don't have any troops. I don't think I have any skirmishers. I think Minutemen can use it, but not... Skir but not uh, I don't know that we have any Minutemen regiments. Artillery... I have not prioritized Minutemen. We could raise a Minuteman company. Let's hold off on that for now. Um, let's just go. So, we're going to have the original regulars move out. These two original companies are going to form a brigade. Hawking's Brigade. We'll start them north. I'm just doing this. And, and then the new regulars, the guys we just got, Dayton and Stark, will form a brigade. Okay. And then I think we'll go with the three militia companies I'm going to bring with me, or the three militia regiments I'm going to bring with me. We will leave the 140 men behind because I think they'll be more of a liability. So Cliff's three militia regiments. So basically, or, well, I basically have two brigades of regulars and a brigade of militia. We will bring the provision wagon as well, if I can figure out how to click on it. What's this thing? Oh, it's just a flag. And then the general. All 
Okay, so we are leaving 140 troops behind that we don't have muskets for. They all want United States muskets, huh? Which we are not producing enough of. All right, we'll form these brigades up into an army. 4,200 troops. Fort Rice is considerably under strength, only 500 men versus 4,000 of ours. They're sending reinforcements, Butcher. Stay back. Stay back. Don't get yourself killed. So they're going to send a thousand reinforcements, probably just sending them to their death. But I'm okay with that. They want to reinforce Fort Rice. You know, never interrupt your adversary when they're reinforcing failure. All right, so let's do this. Let's fight. Looks like we've got 500 men in the fort, 600 men out of the fort. And then we've got our three brigades in. So before the AI can do too much damage on the strategic map, let's jump in and fight this thing and... Hopefully destroy two full British regiments, and then maybe we can move. It looks like there's 2,000 troops at Fort Stevens, which will be on our flank. So even though Fort Stevens isn't directly linked with Fort Rice, I think we will move in that direction. All right, so actually these boys are already out of the fort. Oh, these are our troops. Wait, those are all our... All of those are our troops. God, we have so many men. All right, so they got two batteries of artillery out in front of the fort. Dear God, this is a level one fort, so there's actually no inner rampart. They have way too many men here for this tiny-ass fort. Okay. Hopefully we avoid having too many, taking too many casualties. Let's merge our units together first. I know some folks have been like, why do you merge your units? You should have more units that you can then flank with. And it's like, yes, but I also traditionally am fighting with more militia than regulars and I worry that my militia will not hold together generally long enough to get my flanking like if I if I have units that are placed on the flank they take longer to get around on the flank and by the time the units on the get to the flank the units in front route well now the enemy just pivots to face me that's sort of been my logic of why I haven't done that but you know to each their own all right, let's move these batteries here. All right, so the enemy artillery is out front, which makes me a little nervous because I don't want to lose a bunch of men to enemy artillery. So let's do this. I wonder if I can start an artillery duel because we should have the enemy art artillery heavily outnumbered. Now, their quality might be better than ours, but... I'd rather start an artillery duel at this point in time, frankly. So let's keep our infantry a little bit further back and hope that the enemy shoots at our artillery. And if they do, that's I'm fine with that. Because I think three batteries versus their two. I can always bring my infantry up to support if they're going to advance on me. We'll bring these additional two batteries up so we can get five versus their two. All right. These three batteries are all going to focus on this one enemy battery here on the flank. Meanwhile, these two batteries are going to come up. These infantry companies are going to form on the flank to extend our line. And then this company will move into this wood line. And this company will move into this wood line. Hopefully avoiding becoming too much in the way of targets for the enemy artillery. Because I want to try and preserve my, uh, my infantry. So as much as we can just try and deal with the enemy artillery first. See if the enemy infantry is going to come forward and try and engage me. I would think they may just be like, hey, this isn't worth a fight. Like, they may not put up much of a fight. They may try to retreat right away. 
but we'll see. A grand battery. Can the enemy not see me from here? I don't think they're. Oh no, they are shooting. Oh my! All right. So both their batteries have now opened up. Our three batteries on their one are doing damage. Four pounder, six pounder, three pounder. So a six pound batter. Oh god. All right. Well, you wanna try and engage me? We will send these boys up to flank you. I don't want my artillery to get picked off. These guys should have brown buses. They do. So I'll send my infantry up here to try and drive the enemy skirmishers off. Alright, we drove off the one battery. Shift to the other battery. They're still pestering me. This, this right flank battery, which is fortunately the three-pound gallopers, are losing a fair number of men. But I think once we flank them here, we just flanked them, they will probably pull back. Maybe. They're supposed to. All right, they're routing. Our other artillery is coming up now. And I think maybe the light troops just routed. Alright, we got our additional artillery coming up. I'm not sure it matters. But if we can get another eight guns in here. Oh shit, I don't really want to lose casualties to the enemy artillery that's shooting at me, but... Our boys are already exhausted. They already need a breather. Apparently working guns is hard work. We don't have any wagons here, right? Yeah, I don't see any. Trying to preserve my inter infantry force. I've got two very good brigades of infantry, and I do not want them to die. This campaign, frankly, is less about destroying the enemy, although that is certainly a nice thing to accomplish. And this campaign is much more just about taking these forts and securing our flank for the drive into Canada. So I will trade ammo for lives, gladly. Alright, those boys are routing from their guns. All right, everybody, fire all of your batteries on this one enemy battery. I don't think they'll last long. <laughs> My troops have the endurance of a three-year-old baby. That could be a lot of endurance. You never seen the endurance of a toddler? Oh, shoot. No, don't do that. No, don't. Just shoot at this guy. I don't want you to move. I just want you to... my troops move up on the right flank yet? Let's halt. Everybody just hold your fire for a second. Rest up a little bit. Um, all right, did those troops move up on the right flank? These guys did, slightly anyway. Oops. Oops. Are those skirmishers moving forward on us again? They are. Assholes. And now they're going to route from the field. Okay. Alright, how's your, your conditioning? You guys are getting a little bit back. Good enough. Boom! 
It's fun. Artillery just going ham on the enemy is fun. All right, you get in that wood line here. You get cover, then engage the enemy skirmishers. All right, artillery, shoot at whoever you want to shoot at at this point. The enemy artillery did very little work. We lost about 20 men in one battery. I think these guys on this flank are the militia, I think. Yeah, they are. I'd rather lose the militia than the regulars. So I'm going to pull a Napoleon Old Guard and just make sure that we protect the regulars. And you know what? Use the other guys as cannon fodder. Boys, engage from the right. These two battalions of regular troops will engage from the center. And the bulk of our troops will remain uncommitted so as to hopefully minimize losses. Oh, you guys shoot at their flank. These guys in the open. Shoot at the guys in the open. Alright, we already routed this company. There you go. Enemies routing. Well, I accomplished a victory at minimal casualties. Oh God, don't shoot at my own boys. All right, they surrendered, nice. They surrendered, nice. Keep going boys, keep chasing them. I should have positioned those other troops on the flank. I knew that they that was unwise. It would have given us a chance to probably stack wipe the enemy force, but I didn't have the patience. Which is ironic, because I had the patience to let my artillery just lob shells all day. Maybe some of these guys will stop their retreating eventually. Yakety sacks, don't come back. Maybe they won't retreat off the edge of the map. They might already be gone. I don't see anyone. Hmm. Okay. I guess they're gone. Or if they're not gone, we're not catching them. Where, oh, where did the British go? Where, oh, where did they be? You can capture cannons, but not directly. If You can capture them and use them on the battlefield. 
You can't, for some strange reason, directly translate captured battlefield cannons to... Wait, where are my guys going? Why are they routing? What the fuck? Why? Why did those guys route off the map? Anyway. All right, so we deployed 4,200 men. The enemy deployed 1,200. We lost 44 and one gun. They lost 419. Seven guns, 85 captured. So actually they lost 500 of their 1,200 men. So despite the fact that we really didn't do much in the way of fighting on this battle, that it was really just an artillery death stack, the enemy still suffered very heavy casualties. Uh, and so that's good. Also, the loss of those cannons should help, uh, you know, the next battle for Fort Stevens, I would think. At the very least, their two companies of artillery are destroyed, I believe. So they shouldn't have those when we swing east. Now, there will be some pursuit stuff. We'll see if we wipe. Oh, nice. One of those regiments surrendered. Both of them surrendered. So the entire enemy force has been destroyed. Good job, boys. Who's firing at who? Or was that... Okay. Maybe that was just... The sounds for Fort Rice. Wow, we consumed a lot of ammo apparently already out of that wagon. All right, so we took the battlefield loot. We won the battle for Fort Rice. We linked these theaters back up. So if we go to the strategic map, east and west are now linked. Huzzah! No, I don't think anyone's fighting at Falmouth. It could be wrong. I think the cannon we heard was just from Fort Rice. Falmouth boys are still at their full strength. Okay. So, the entire enemy force, a thousand men, destroyed. Did we really consume all that ammo? Oh. That was a lot of ammo. Um, all right, so we will now... What's the market say we have ammo-wise? Uh, all right. Um, so we will now move on Fort Stevens, I think. It's not directly linked to Rice, but I don't want to leave 2,000 men in my flank. So we're going to move this entire force toward Fort Stevens. We'll leave... A single regiment behind to garrison Fort Rice. And we will make up for that by bringing, I think, a regiment up from Leicester, maybe? It's also the possible the cannons I heard were warships off the coast. Well, actually, let's leave the troops at Leicester where they are now. Until we've taken Fort Stevens. Because there's a chance... That lures the enemy out, and I'd rather just keep them in place and defeat them at the fort. Alternatively, we'll just pull the troops out of Hatfield and move them up to Rice. I think that makes more sense. This garrison here makes no reason to leave them behind. So we'll move them forward before we move out of the Fort Rice area. Suppose everybody can just go in the fort for now. I know I will have to reform those brigades, but I get better rest in the fort, I think, for the day. How many men can Fort Rice hold? Not 800 men. And we've got 4,000. Okay. That's why it's a level one fort. That's why they looked so overstacked. All right, so, not all factory shipyards used. Yeah, I know that. You don't have to tell me that every single day.
Okay. Thank you for the resub, Wolf. Appreciate it. 41 months. Can you believe it? Three and a half years. That's a long time. What are you doing with your life? All right. So Fort Rice is ours. Fort Stevens is the next objective. We'll do the same, same brigade structure. <laughs> you can't. All right. So we're going to move for the Hawkins Brigade up. The Hawkins Brigade. Uh, we will move the other regular brigade. Stark and Dayton's brigade. Toward Mondanak Mountain. Overlooking Fort Stevens. Suffering a little bit of attrition here from the elements. And then the militia brigade. I wish there was a way to make permanent brigades. The whole army management in this game, you know, for a game that did set for a for a series, Ultimate General Civil War, that did such a brilliant job with army management in Ultimate General Civil War to so thoroughly bleh the army management in this game, it's a little frustrating. Like, I know it's a totally different... Oh, God, man. THG, you're just blitzing out there. I know it's a very different type of game, but it's still very weird that they did such a good job in their previous iterations with army management and did such a poor job on this. Well, it's just, it's a very different kind of a game. With the strategic elements, I don't know if that type of army management would work or not, but it certainly doesn't work the way it's set up now, right? Like, I don't know that it's a easily transferable how they did it before just do it again but i i do think it's it's weird that they did such a good job before um all right so we're at 2600 bucks so i mean we really need to be building infrastructure and things like that which we're not doing because i'm too focused on fighting um We got Charleville's brown buses. I think we captured most of those. We have 185 brown buses in stockpile. Pretty sure they were all captured in that last battle. So rifles, a decent number of rifles got captured. Did we capture any cannons? We captured two more six-pounders. Yes. That's enough for another battery. And those are the best field cannons that I've seen in this game so far. Gallopers are more like horse artillery in my opinion. Although I don't know a ton about artillery in this particular era. Um, I can't swap the guns out while I'm in the field, though, I don't think. Yeah, I can't. So I have to wait till we're back in at base. Your favorite battery is Duracell. I'm more of a, I'm more of a, a Rayovac fan, you know. They have a factory in Wisconsin, so. Um, all right, let's worry about the logistics after we fight the battle for Fort Stevens. So let's get our boys up here. Let's see, is the enemy withdrawing? No, they're moving forward. They want an open field fight. Strange. I will oblige them. All right, so it's going to be 2,000 of them versus 4,000 of us. They're coming at us. Which general is that? I don't even know. Um, they got a regiment with 84 men, 110 men, 113 men. So these are all under strength. Then they've got some solid ones, 650 men. No dragoons, thank God. One brigade is two stars of experience. Let's just go ahead. Let's set this up. Let's let them come to us. We've got five batteries of artillery, boys. Five. Come at me, bro. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for this episode. I know we're on the verge of a battle for the Battle of Fort Stevens, uh, but that battle takes quite a while, and so we will pick that fight up in our next video. I hope you guys are enjoying this series, and we'll see where things go next time. Until next time, however, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.